How y'all doing? Doing, doing, rise high. Let's talk about it with my Linda. That's the jam. T Pain ain't lost it either. He still, T Pain is still T Pain. I am a fan. Still got that little, that little speaker box thing that he does, and that's that's what hits it off right there. Just hey. So today, um, I'm going to be talking about healthy relationships and um, unhealthy relationships. Now, when I speak about relationships, y'all, I'm just not talking about um, like a boy and a girl. I'm talking about friendships too. All the ships, I guess I would say. I know I say that a lot, the ships. So um, how can you, how do you know what is a good relationship or a healthy relationship? How can you identify that? And if it's unhealthy, how can you work on that? Um, we walk around a lot with a lot of stuff on us. Um, I want to give uh, my condolences to Kobe Bryant's family, the tragedy that happened my condolences to the family to everybody that's grieving over him he was a legend um, for the nba so once again my condolences go to kobe bryant and his wife and his his family so healthy relationships that's what we're going to be discussing today it seems like it's been a lot of chaos going on with relationships and i don't know if it's tax season <laughs> that people are you know you know kind of kind of doing it backwards or or manipulating the situation so i wanted to talk about healthy relationships and how you can stay in one that's if you really want to stay in one and how can you identify um, what's an unhealthy relationship so um the first rule to a healthy relationship of course is support trust and honesty there is no way possible that you can be in any type of ship without trust honesty and support you have to tell me where i'm slipping at and it's so funny because i had this conversation with somebody earlier um, to identify where am i slipping or where am i i'm falling short at so i can be a better person myself so in that ship, whether it be a friendship or a relationship, you have to have that support and that trust and that honesty. The second thing is, is that you have to listen, okay? And that's not just like, okay, hurry up so you can talk so I can say what I have to say, listen. <laughs> you know we do that, like, all right. Um, okay. mm. Mm -hmm. But I'm about to say what I need to say. You know, a lot of times we do that. We we wait, you know, do that waiting. 
um, and not actually listen to what the other person is trying to actually say to you, which is defeating the purpose <laughs> of the conversation. Because if you're not um, retaining any information that they're giving you about what the problem is, then there's no reason to be actually talking, you know? So listening, making sure you listen to the other person's point of view. Everybody doesn't have the same background. Everybody doesn't have the same um, uh, childhood. So it's different type of perspectives on how people take things. Some people can be, on one note, you can be offensive to some, one person. And on the other note, another person can be cool with the way you come across. I was just speaking about that earlier. So knowing that person and actually listening to their values, when people are talking, they're gonna spit out some morals and values to you of how they brought up it, how they was brought up and what they feel. So actually listening to that person's point of view is um, a way to keep a healthy relationship going. And um, you know, just listening to what they have to say. Um, the third thing is no judgment. First of all, you shouldn't be judging people anyways, because I know your shit stay. Everybody does. Everybody. So being non-judgmental, having a person come to you where they are, you have to accept the person. Well, you don't have to, but if you want to be in a friendship or a relationship with somebody, you have to accept them where they are, and then you continue to work on those factors. But be non judgmental. Non judgmental. You don't need to judge people because that opens up a door for people to judge you. And if you can't, um, if you can't accept constructive criticism, or criticism in general, then somebody's feelings gonna be hurt. And that's no good. That's when chairs get thrown, police getting called, mama's getting called, telling them to come get their son, you know. Come get, you know, you calling you calling somebody sister and telling them to come get their little nappy headed sister, you know. So being non judgmental is a great factor. And meeting a person where they actually are as well is um, helping to be to have a, a healthier relationship. The, the next thing is not talking behind people back. Whoa. Some people that do that. They talk about folks behind their back. Mm-hmm. They do. It was a meme that was out and it says something, something to the factor of, you know, be my friend even when you're not around me, something like that. So making sure that you protected my character, you know, you know me and you know me as a friend or uh, a significant other. And if you're not protecting my character and I'm nowhere around, then you know, that's really unhealthy because that can get back to you. You know, so-and-so said so-and-so about you. Like, I thought he loved me. Oh, I thought she loved me. Why am I hearing that folks is saying, you know, you said so-and-so. So that's when the he say, she say start to come up. And, you know, that's when people, you know, don't believe in you anymore because they don't believe that they can trust you. And that's the number one thing to a healthy relationship is trust so not talking behind people back if you have a problem with somebody whether it be, you know your friend or your significant other just say it say it because nine times out of ten if they're your friend they're going to unconditionally love you in general you know so actually saying that saying i don't like when you leave your clothes on the bathroom floor I don't like when you interrupt me when I'm trying to talk. I don't want to yell over nobody when I'm trying to talk. So telling them that instead of saying, girl, you know, what you call it, he don't never, he be leaving this stuff on the floor or she don't never listen to what I got to say. She always want to talk in front of me. That's why I don't deal with her like that. All that other extra stuff. Tell that person that 
don't talk behind their back. Don't, don't do that. The next thing is, is boundaries. Having boundaries for your friends and your significant other. So when, 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 it, when I was doing the research on this and it said boundaries, I thought of man cave. So um, a man cave is a man cave. That means that's his territory, that's his domain, and that's what he wants to go to to get some type of um, thought. Hopefully he ain't down there texting no other girl. That's, that's worst case scenario. We don't want that. But that is his boundary. That's his domain. That's what he does. That's his um, his territory. So respecting that boundary of people need space, people need you know time to think and breathe and focus. It's not all about me, 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 me. I want to be around you. I want to do this. I want to do that. I wanna... It's not healthy. It's really not healthy to be around somebody twenty four seven. Is is that's not that's not good. So respecting that boundary and respecting that people do need their space to even get their thoughts together of their own being as a person, what they want to do, what their goals are. You know, you don't you don't have the time for people to keep on talking in your ear. You just want silence. And silence is the best thing to get your thoughts together. The last thing is um, forgiveness. Forgiveness, forgive people for what you can. Now, with some stuff you can't forgive people for, and that's fine. That's fine. That's when you kind, because it, it, then it uh, accumulates to an unhealthy relationship. So if you can't forgive anybody for what they've done or what, yeah, what they've done to you, you're going to, I was telling my niece this, you're going to subconsciously um, develop a resentment towards them subconsciously you know not knowing if you're not forgiving them for their behavior or their actions or what they did for to you so you're going to uh, create this resentment and you're going to wonder why i can't enjoy the flowers that he's trying to bring me or why can i enjoy my friend saying let's go out uh to the movies or let's go take the babies out why do i not want to do that with them because there's a resentment from what they did to you before that you haven't addressed so either you're going to forgive it or you're going to let it go and address it those are two different steps that you can take to help with that process of developing or continuing to have a healthy relationship Beyonce. she has got me through some things Yes, I am. I am part of the hive. I am. <sighs> she has got me through some things. B is um. Ooh. Yeah. She's got me through some things for sure. How y'all feeling out there? I'm feeling pretty good. Make sure again you share this video. Share, share, share because you know I want to make sure that people understand the importance of healthy relationships because people around here acting fools. Acting fools. Complete fools. And they wonder why some folks is out of their character and doing some dangerous stuff because you're not respecting them as a human being. And you're not respecting their character and who they are in society and what they bring. So share this video because I, I feel really deep. I feel really passionate about this information that I'm sharing with y'all today. Um, that is going to help. It, it is. And once again, like I said, when I talk, I talk to myself too. I don't just talk to y'all. I talk to myself. So how do you know that it's an unhealthy relationship? I think we kind of all know how we know it's not unhealthy. Um, when you uh, cussing out somebody, that's pretty not, that's not healthy. That's not healthy. Cussing folks out is not healthy. Unless you have that 
type of relationship, you know. But cussing folks out, no, that's not healthy. That's not healthy at all. If, uh, you know, if, if you, once again, if you only let that person, if, you, if you're the only person that's actually talking and they hear a word somebody else is saying, it's pretty unhealthy. <clears throat> it's pretty unhealthy. Because once again, you are missing out on very important information that you want to obtain about that person. So if you just talk and talk and talk and and ain't listening. It's not, it's, it's unhealthy. It's unhealthy. And some people don't call you out on that. Some people don't say, and they just let you keep on going and going and going until they break or they leave you <laughs> or they leave the friendship or they leave, you know, the relationship. And then you'll hear after the, well, you never listen to me. Understanding when a person is uncomfortable, you know. So once again, like I said before, if I'm uncomfortable with you screaming at me, if I'm uncomfortable with you dictating me and criticizing me all the time, then that's unhealthy. And once again, what's going to result from it is I'm going to leave and um, or I'm going to turn into full blown attack mode. That's that's a natural instinct. People have a natural fight or flight um, built into their system or in their being. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to defend myself or I'm going to leave the situation. And then a couple years down the road, you will hear, well, he was always yelling or she was always yelling or nagging all the time. Men have a lot of challenges and in this world. And I'm not saying that, take it, take it easy on them. That's all I'm going to say is just take it easy on them. Take it easy on them. Um, especially our, you know, our, our black men, take it easy on them. Um, they have a lot of stuff going on. And as a man, you don't want to show that. So just take it easy on them sisters. You know, I know you want to, Ooh, I know, I know you do. been there, done that, but sometimes silence and Silence, silencing your mouth and comforting with your body is what a person needs. Another way to know a healthy relationship is, you know, um, not giving a person their private space. I talked about that before. There is no room for growth if they're around a person all the time. There's no room for growth. Last week I talked about self knowledgement or acknowledgement of self. How do you think that you're going to learn yourself if you have people around you all the time? And don't get me wrong, you love those people. You do. But sometimes you have to be in a silent moment and a silent place for yourself to understand what you can contribute and what you need to work on. So once again, like I said, another thing is yelling, throwing things, calling each other bitches. Oh, you a hoe, you a hoe, and you a bitch. That, there's no need for all that. You don't need to call nobody names to get your point across unless you don't know how to communicate. Then that's when it just comes out. And the last thing that is unhealthy 
is when you use verbal abuse um, and physical abuse, of course, you know, that's unhealthy. And if you are in a domestic violence relationship, um, there is um, um, institutions and hotlines that you can call in regards to this matter. And there is safety nets that you can use also. And if you um, are once again in a domestic violence relationship, I am a social worker, so reach out to me um, and let me know. I will help you. Um, I will help you, period. Not to the best of my that's what I do. So, uh, and if you know somebody that's in an unhealthy relationship and in an abusive relationship, you want to comfort them as much as possible, but not also letting the abuser know that they are trying to seek help. Because from me being, um, when I was in, um, uh, when I deal with family preservation, there was a safe zone or a safety plan that I created for a person that was in a domestic violence relationship. And that safety plan was utilized only for them. And they knew a specific number to call or a specific code word, um, something like that. So if you know someone that's in a domestic violence relationship, reach out and, and start exchanging secret numbers and, 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 and so on and so forth. So um, and if you want information about that, you can reach out to me on risehighradio.com. You can email me, and I'll do the best that I can to um, assist you with that. Yeah, no, I'm busy. Thank you, Queen. Matter of fact, check Queen out tomorrow. She has some interviews going on. Um, that's one of my co-hosts, All Rise High Radio. She has some interviews going on on tomorrow. So make sure y'all tune in at. Seven um, Pacific time. Um, she has some interviews going on, so check her out. RiseHighRadio.com. Check it out on Facebook. It's going to go live. So, so in the midst of everything, so all this stuff that I'm telling y'all, what is it going to result? Like, what's the result? Like, why am I being nice? <laughs> why am I shutting my mouth? Hello. Why am I not busting out his windows? <laughs> Why am I not throwing this, throwing her clothes out? Why am I not doing all this extra stuff? What is it resulting? What? Why do I gotta be? Why do I gotta do this? Like, what is it? What is the benefit with me? I have ways that it will benefit you. I promise. And once again, like I said, I research stuff. Always. I think I was born to research, actually. Um, it's going to help you, and it's going to be benefit you. Eh? The last thing is going to keep your ass out of jail. We don't want to go jail. No, we, we don't want to go jail. No jail. No jail. We don't do jail, okay? We got stuff to do out here in the world. We don't do jail. Absolutely not. No. No, sir. No, ma'am. No, sir. No, ma'am. We don't do jail. So what is a healthy relationship going to do for you? What does it what does it contribute? First of all, it increases your your uh, sense of belongings and your sense of purpose. It, it uh, increases your self-esteem. For a person to um, be able to treat you good and to treat you fairly and to love you and to love on you, it boosts um, your 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 energy. It boosts your belongings and, and, and what you want to do. It helps. It just makes you feel happy, just like laughter does when you laugh. 
Laughter automatically increases you feeling good. And that's what, uh, that's what if you um, are nice to people, that it, it helps you to belong, to, to have a sense of purpose. The second thing is it boasts your, like I said, your happiness and it reduces stress, okay? So if you're not stressing out about that person or that friendship because you're doing all the things that you need to make it a healthy one, then, you know, you're a little bit more happier. Um, you're a little bit more happier. And like I said, it decreases your stress. And you know how I am about stress. I want to decrease stress as much as possible. Who has time for stress? I not me. I not me. I got too much other stuff going on to be worried about any stress, okay? So doing those things also help you with stress, listening and not judging it, and, you know, and, and your trust that you have for that person. That all helps with not being stressed stress and it like I said it boosts who you are and your belongings the the next thing is it improves your self-confidence and your self-worth and your self-value uh, forgiving somebody forgiving somebody for doing you wrong that is a huge huge mature thing if you can forgive somebody for doing you wrong, that is a huge compliment and I take my hat off to you because a lot of people can't do that. A lot of people start cussing, want to fight them, you know, when they see them, they're like, oh, I don't mess with them, they're not, you know. So, um, forgiving somebody that, you know, that hurt your feelings or did you wrong and moving forward with that relationship or that friendship, that takes a lot of maturity. And once again, I take my hat off to you for that. It also, a, a healthy relationship also helps you, a healthy relationship or friendship. Remember, we're talking about both. Um, it also helps you cope with trauma, any trauma that you've been in, um, any life changes that you've been in, whether it be a divorce or a death or anything like that. Being able to talk to a significant other or talk to a friend about what's going on, it helps with that. It helps you to cope. And that's why it's important to have that healthy relationship with that person so you'll be able to be able to go and talk to somebody about what's going on with your life and you know the problems that you're having with uh with your life and the last thing is is um it encouraged you to want to do better i have a friend and I swear, he encourages me all the time to want to do better, to want to eat better. He's just an encouragement all the way around. I have a couple of friends like that, that they just encourage me. And I don't think they know that, but they do. And I just want to do better every time I talk to them or every time I, uh, you know, interact with them. I just want to do better. Like, yeah, I got this. I got this. I can do this. That's what it helps the relationship does. It allows you to... Um, be encourage your own self and make changes to your own self that that is beneficial in the long run now some relationships that you know they they got you drinking more <laughs> you, you that's unhealthy you know but it's it is healthy relationships that have you you know exercising more you want to do better for yourself you want to eat better you want to live better you want to study more you want to go back to school you want to own your own business those type of healthy relationships and those type of people that's in your circle you know that is good for you and that's good to encourage yourself so you want to be around those people and that's the way you can identify that it's a healthy relationship too if they're encouraging you hey But that's all I have for y'all. I hope that all this information that I've gave you about identifying uh, healthy relationships and how to contribute to healthy relationships and stay healthy 
and what's the benefit of a healthy relationship. I really hope that this helped you. Once again, share, 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 because this is good information, and I want everybody to receive this if they can. Um, you can watch it on the later time on YouTube, on Rise High Radio. YouTube, make sure you subscribe to that because we always are having um, interviews with, um, you know, of course, me coming on. Uh, we also have a, other, a couple other people that do their, um, their live as well. So you can also go to the Facebook is, um, and go ahead and like our page on Facebook. We would appreciate that. I always appreciate y'all, always. And if it's anything, once again, that you want to share with me, you can always send an email to risehighradio.com and I will get that message and I will answer you back. Or you can Facebook message Rise High Radio and I will get that message and get back with you. I love you guys and I appreciate your being your 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 energy that you bring to me every single week and i hope that i do the same for you um again this is my linda let's talk about it i'll see you guys next week at 7 p.m now i remember i told y'all i want to do a man versus woman i'm still working on that so if you are interested in to in getting in on this man versus women debate um, go ahead and message me at Rise High Radio on Facebook and we can talk and see what's going on with that. If you have some stuff to say about, you know, relationships and men versus women, I really would appreciate that. Once again, this is my Linda. Let's talk about it. Rise High Radio. I'll see you guys next week. Peace.